Maria, you can start now. Yeah. So hello everyone. Good evening. I'm Amulya, third year medical student, ESIC Medical College. I, on behalf of Simsa Telangana and Andhra Pradesh, welcome you all to this webinar, Protein in Your Routine. We chose this particular topic because, as we all know, proteins are the building blocks of our body. We need protein in our diet to help our body repair cells, make new ones, general growth and development. But according to a 2017 survey, 73% of Indians are deficient in protein. An article in the Hindu on 20th July 2020 states that hundreds of millions of people in India above the international poverty line cannot afford a healthy and nutritious diet. It says that this confirms the fact that the problem of poor nutrition in India is largely on account of un unaffordability of nutritious diet, not on account of lack of information or taste or cultural preferences. So, to address this problem, we sent out call to call to submit abstracts containing diet plans to include protein in our routine in an affordable way, best of which will be presented to you in a short time. And we also have our panelists, Dr. Lakshmi Kilaru ma'am and Dr. Aparna Kuna ma'am. Thank you both for being here ma'am. Welcome. Dr. Lakshmi Kilaru ma'am did her Thank master's you. in food technology and nutrition from University of Georgia, USA. Ma'am did PhD in food technology and nutrition from University of Georgia. Ma'am has worked under projects for United States Department of Agriculture during her graduation. Ma'am has over 10 years of cross-cultural experience as a clinical nutritionist. Ma'am has worked in various aspects of pediatric and gynae nutrition after moving back to India. Ma'am also worked as an adjunct professor at Professor Jayashankar Telangana State Agricultural University. Ma'am has headed VLCC as an area technical head. Ma'am is currently working as a head, head nutritionist for Apollo Life for Nutrition Pan India. Welcome, ma'am. We are so happy to have you here. Hello, all. We also have Dr. Aparna Kuna, ma'am, who is a senior scientist at MSPI Quality Control Lab at Professor Jay Shankar Telangana State Agricultural University, Hyderabad. Ma'am is involved in research in food quality control and also in teaching MSc and BSc students food science and nutrition. Welcome, ma'am. Hello. Hello, everybody. So without any further delay, let's begin the session. First, we have abstract presentation followed by talk by our panelists. At the end, we'll have your questions answered by our panelists. So over to Yashaswini. Thank you, Amulya. Hello, guys. This is Yashaswini from Simsa, and I'll be taking over the abstract presentation part of today's event. So firstly, congratulations to all of the finalists of the abstract presentation who are here with us to present their abstracts. We are looking forward to listen to your presentations today. We also have with us Dr. Lakshmi Kilaru ma'am and Dr. Aparna Kuna ma'am as judges today. Thank you for being on board with us ma'am. So before starting, let me go over some ground points. Please make sure that all of your mics are turned off during the presentation except that of the presenters. You can always text your questions and queries in the chat box. Make sure that your presentations don't exceed five minutes of time. At the end of your presentation, the judges will be asking you some questions regarding your presentation, which either of the team members can answer. So now that we have gone over the rules, let's start our abstract presentations. First, we have a team one, that is Kushi Tulshana from uh, Kamineni Institute of Medical Sciences, Narket Palli, and Napyata Potula. Can I present my screen? Yes, yes. Just a minute. Is it okay? Yes, it is visible, Kushi. Protein is a complicated topic, but the basics are quite simple. Understanding the true answers for common myths for protein will help you 
what some diet consume a wholesome diet a very good evening to one and all this is krishi tulshan navyata potula from kamini institute of medical sciences nagpur today i am going to talk about protein eating in the age of dieting protein malnutrition is an imbalance between the supply of protein and body's demand for them to ensure optimal growth it not only decreases physical uh, decreases physical growth but also impairs cognitive development as the world's largest producer of pulses india stands to gain tremendously in boosting pulses consumption an advantages of boosting boosting uh, supplies of uh, uh, boosting of pulses consumption is delivers nutrition uh, de delivers multiple de benefits improves marketability of uh, of crop higher investments for grower and high investment one of the most typed question on the internet by the general public is how much protein is too much protein or how much protein is actually required to the body the normal rdr of protein is 0.8 per kg body weight according to us according to us a normal protein diet should consist of five main factors first one is source according to many people protein source is only from animals you cannot get equal protein from plants that too in an affordable you can get an enough protein from plants that too in an affordable budget second is availability in local with some may, with so many eco friendly meat free protein source out there you don't have to uh, starve keep in mind that even with plant protein sources it always better to buy as local as possible sustainable according to harvard medical school sustainable diet are those with low environmental impacts that contribute to food and nutritional security rate of absorption usually people think only about what is going in their mouth or input and completely forget about the absorption inside and here the rate of absorption plays a vital role as it determines the energy that is actually been supplied to the body and price the locally available soya chunks and lentils where you just need to spend 40 paisa for 1 gram of protein tells us how important sustainable diet is sustainable development is what we are looking after there are some protein foods with high biological value at low prices peanut butter one of the cheap and the best protein source and my personal favorite could be eaten along with chapati and bread and is of high nutritional value next mixed lentils the second best food in lent is lentils it is essential to have mixed lentils as it it has all as it will uh, it has it has all the essential amino acids same goes with the pulses for the same amount for the for, for the same acre of farmland usable protein from soy is far more bet, more than rice one of the most common thing gen, uh, one one of the most common thing this generation is opting for is veganism a vegan can a vegan can attain protein from a lot of sources like tofu lentils chia seeds broccoli and quinoa a sustainable diet is focused on higher intake a higher intake of whole plant food properly many still choose to eat animal products but in a very low quantity and even considering making a switch to more sustainable diet should consider what diet would they likely to switch to and try making baby steps anyway my way of going to sustainable protein diet is plate and planet plate and planet to go hand in hand just as different foods can have different impact on human health they can also have impact on environment shift towards planetary healthy diet preferably, preferably protein diet can nurture both people and planet i am immensely grateful for gi for giving me and my uh, teammate this opportunity thank you thank you team one uh, now let's go to the question section uh, aparna ma'am do you have any questions for team one Yeah, I would like to ask Navyata one question. Uh, could you please elaborate on uh, uh, the sustainability between plant protein and animal protein? Because you say that you want to really uh, support the planet through protein sources. So, could you please elaborate on that? 
which one do you think will be more sustainable is it plant protein or animal protein um hello ma'am um so according to me plant protein will be more sustainable because um, you know animal protein is not easily available and nowadays uh, because you know because of economy has increased uh, people usually go with economy type of foods right so uh, i think um, sustainability is more with plant foods and yeah. because plants are plants are easily available right the legumes the lentils the pulses they're easily available in the stores and um, and even in the backward areas these things are very available more than meat and fish with all the omega acids okay so if you talk about availability uh, if you know about the statistics and all that india is number 1 in the livestock production so we are number 1 and number 2 positions in livestock and meat production also which means we have plenty of meat which is available as compared to the plant sources so now can you tell me yes ma'am when like normally when we see according to the statistics there might be the livestock uh, production more but then nowadays we see news right the uh, uh, you know animal killing and these types of things have become um, more common so people usually don't opt for food like for animal food like that that's what they do uh, they don't usually go for animal foods so that's my way of uh, approach to sustainability because you can go with plant food because you get equal nutrition right with uh, plant foods also okay. if a person is a vegetarian then uh, definitely they opt for a uh, plant uh, food okay i think lakshmi can uh, go now uh, yeah so uh, i mean according to what can you hear me yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma so um according to what you're thinking is i just want to stress on the fact that uh, not all pro plant proteins uh, are as well good good for your human for the body as the animal protein so okay. i agree that lot of people are converting into veganism etc but uh, what you guys have to uh, focus on is uh, the balance of essential amino acids in each protein so plant yeah. proteins have something or the other missing but the only plant protein which has all the essential amino acids is quinoa but quinoa again is uh, expensive here in india and it's actually a peruvian grain which belongs to peru so um, if you want a want a complete balance of protein again you have to mix two or three protein uh, proteins together for example if you take a pea protein and a beans protein and a pulses protein and something else and you put them together then you get the complete uh, essential amino acid sources but again if you go for the meat like you can go in for lean meats you can go in for chicken or fish of course they have good uh, essential amino acids in them and uh, it, it and also if you take an egg so there is something called as protein protein digestibility so the protein digestibility or the protein factor for egg digestibility is 1 that means it contains all the complete proteins in them so uh, basically instead of telling your patients to shift to veganism or vegetarianism for us looking at the protein source to improve their uh, immunity would be my most uh, most major uh, uh, thing in to advise them so uh, i mean that's i just wanted to say that before you think that you know vegan is the ways the utmost concept uh, which is taking over the world today yes ma'am sure yes. it was a very great information ma'am thank you uh, thank you ma'am and thank you navyata now let's move on to the second team um, madhu tejashwi from gmc nizamabad and bapya naidu from basker medical college hyderabad Team two, are you ready to present? Yeah, 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 ready. Is the screen visible? Yes, Hello. it is visible. Okay. Good evening, one and all. 
I'm Madhu Tejasvi from Government Medical College, Nizamabad, and my teammate is here, Bhavya Naidu from Baskara Medical College. Thank you, Sansa, for giving this opportunity. So we are here to explain the importance of protein diet in our daily routine. Our diet should include adequate amounts of high-quality protein. So what are the good sources of high-quality protein? It is nothing but protein from animal sources and plant sources. So protein from animal sources add complete protein, and whereas plants from diet add incomplete protein. So why is it important for young young people or adolescents? It is important for the growth and repair, and also for the protection of hormones and enzymes. The protein deficiency leads to malnutrition, stunted growth, which is obvious in developing countries. So, as we have discussed before, animal sources add complete proteins. Here is a pie chart visualizing high quantities of protein in 100 grams of chicken meat, followed by fish, eggs, yogurt, and milk. So, as uh, Everyone can't afford eating chicken meat every every day, so we recommend it to to take uh once in a week or weekly, depending on their uh, convenience. So here is a uh, visualization visualization about incomplete protein. Uh, peanuts contain high quantities of protein, followed by almonds, followed by soybeans, cashews, and cooked peas. So we recommend peanuts to take in high quantity. At least uh, ten peanuts uh, day as a daily serving. So here is a diet plan. Here we mainly included fruits, vegetables, beans, and nuts. Fishes and meat are consumed daily to weekly, so that it is convenient to people of all walks of life. And here. holistic and reductionist holistic is nothing but interconnection between and is only understood only by reference to whole it is nothing but the whole environment it includes quality of life and dietary patterns whereby here we are recommending recommending to take protein food in high quantities so reductionist is nothing but the whole, whole complex phenomenon is expressed in terms of its constituents or fundamentals So no time for your wellness. Then be ready to make time for your illness. So I conclude. I hereby conclude this session here. Thank you. Thank you, Team Two. Uh, Lakshmi, ma'am, do you have any questions for Team Two? Yeah, when you were writing a diet plan there, um, so uh, what did you keep in mind while writing the diet plan? How much of protein did you give the person in one day? Yeah, actually, ma'am, the recommended dietary allowance is roughly zero point eight gram per kg for body weight. So for young mm -hmm. adults, it it will be around forty uh, six to fifty two grams. So I mm -hmm. recommended to give uh, uh, fruit and then beans and uh, weekly meat. So uh, depending on the convenience uh, to the people, because everyone can't afford taking meat every day, so they can take eggs instead. So I yeah, so I have uh, divided the plan in that way. Diet in that way. Okay. Uh, Abhinav, ma'am, do you have any questions for team two? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in continuation with what Dr. Lakshmi asked, uh, I see almonds and nice stuff in your diet plans. So, do you think the the affordability will be good to go with our Indian population consumption of almonds on every single day? Can you give me an alternate to almonds? A low Can cost alternate. Take peanuts. Uh, yes. They can take peanuts because it is high. Uh, it contains high quantities of protein. Okay. Fine. Good. And along with that, they can take. Uh, yeah. Okay. Fine. Another question to you, uh, Madhu. What's the difference between complete okay. protein and incomplete protein? In just one sentence, uh, can you tell me what's the difference? Yeah, ma'am. Complete protein means it contains all the nine indispensable or essential amino acids, whereas incomplete pro proteins lack a few of them, which okay. is mainly seen in plant diet. So, what is the difference between essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids? Uh, 
essential essential amino acids are they are uh, uh, they are not synthesized in the body so we need them in the diet non essential are synthesized in the body itself okay fine okay i am done maybe we can go with the next yeah. thank you ma'am thank you team 2 now let's move on to team 3 that is pravin kasaina from siddhartha medical college vijayawada bhavya bommadi from sri padmavati medical college tirupati bhavishya boppana from sri padmavati medical college tirupati good evening uh, to honorable panelists organizers participants and everyone present on this platform i am bhavishya boppana on behalf of our team i would like to thank simsa for giving us this opportunity the topic for today's presentation is protein in your routine for entire body to work in harmony we need to eat a balanced diet we need to make sure our body is supplied with everything it needs right from carb micro macronutrients like carbohydrates fats proteins to micronutrients like vitamins and minerals and also fiber and water in adequacy now focusing on protein as we all know proteins are the building blocks of muscle protein is found in almost every tissue like skin hair and muscle and almost every cell in our body and is and proteins are required for energy production cell growth repair and for production of hormones enzymes and for transport and also for immunity the recommendatory di recommended dietary allowance of protein is approximately 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight that is 10 to 30% of calorie intake the protein we consume through diet that is through food is broken down or metabolized by our body into amino acids there are nine essential amino acids and 11 non essential amino acids essential in the sense they have to be included in the diet that is supplied through food whereas non essential amino acids can be synthesized by our body in the contemporary world because of lack of time we are inclined towards eating processed foods which obviously contains less amount of protein so it's really important to plan our food consciously with adequate protein in each meal so we have prepared a diet which has rich protein content which is easily accessible and economically feasible uh these are the, uh, can you show the next slide bavya these are the approximate values of protein per 100 g of raw food item that we considered for the preparation of this diet the following is a graph plotted using the above values as we can see soya bean lentils ground nuts mixed seeds mixed seeds and animal sources have relatively high amount of protein our main motto for preparing this diet is to decrease the typical carbohydrate rich diet and uh, supply them with adequate amount of proteins uh, the diet we prepared uh, uh, we have sub, uh, we have prepared diet with breakfast lunch snacks and dinner giving them uh, several options for breakfast we have we have added 1 cup of milk mixed with homemade powder made of grounded dry roast of peanuts soya beans pumpkin flax chia and sunflower seeds and dosa kara pongal kichdi upma made of different types of lentils and pulses and also quinoa and for lunch we have added boiled egg and rice made of rajma or soya and and added lentils green leafy vegetables and also non veg sources like chicken mutton fish ragi and also ragi balls and cup of curd and for snacks we included chikki made of peanuts and sesame seeds and payasam made with lentils and uh, and ragi biscuits sweet corn and fruits and for dinner we have added chapati made with whole grains like wheat and also ragi roti jowar roti bajra and also soya curry green pea curry and non veg sources like chicken mutton and also cup of curd uh, to summarize the diet we prepared includes all the major food groups right from vegetables like cabbage cauliflower spinach amaranthus and fruits like jackfruit banana guava and legumes including soya beans green peas and kidney beans and peanuts and whole grains like rice and wheat and lentils like red gram green gram black gram and millets like ragi bajra jowa and few seeds like pumpkin flax chia and sunflower seeds this is a basic diet that can be fo followed by almost everyone in their routine to conclude protein in our diet is very important and plays a crucial role especially in children under 5 years of age pregnant and lactating women because any deficiency 
of protein in these susceptible population, for example, in children, may lead to stunting, wasting, and impairment of growth, and in worst case scenario, quash your curve. And, and in pregnant women, it may lead to preterm birth and low birth weight of the fetus. Uh, we get complete proteins, that is proteins consisting of all the essential amino acids from animal sources. Whereas from plant, whereas the plant proteins are mostly incomplete, except for, for quinoa, it has almost, it, it is a complete protein. So we should take different types of plant proteins every day to meet our body needs. Our body can store the protein in the way it stores fats or carbohydrates. A healthy balanced diet prevents malnutrition and protects from diseases. So I want to conclude by telling that your body's health reflects what you put into it. So make sure you eat a balanced diet. Thank you. Thank you, Team 3. Uh, Aparna, ma'am, do you have any questions for Team 3? Yes, Bhavishya, I have a question. So you said our body can't store protein just a while ago. Yes, ma'am. So I have a question on this uh, line of yours. Now, say for example, during fasting, yes, ma'am. You're on a fast, Navratri fast or Ramzan fast or uh, during the Lent days or whatever is the fast. So yes. you don't eat any food for a pro for you know prolonged period. So yes, which is the nutrient which breaks down first in the body? Glycogen, ma'am. Okay. And once the glyco glycogen, you know that the maximum amount of reserve in, in liver is up to 500 grams only. After that? After that, uh, it's... Uh, fats get... Uh, fats. I'm from team 3, ma'am. Okay. Uh, then fats get broken down, ma'am. And lastly, the proteins uh, that is from the muscles, ma'am. From protein from the Usually, muscles that he be Yes, ma'am. Usually, we don't have any specified cells in our body so that the proteins can store. As of uh, uh, in case of fats, we, we have adipose tissue, and in case of carbohydrates, glucose can be stored in the form of glycogen, but not the proteins. Okay. So, uh, there is something called as protein sparing action in yes, continuation with this. Can you explain me on that? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Yes. Ma I, I can am hear. myself Pravin. Uh, I am from team B. Uh, team three, ma'am. Yes, Pravin Kasina. You can answer. Yes, ma'am. Protein sparing uh, is the process where the body derives energy from the sources other than proteins, ma'am. Okay. Such sources can include fatty tissues, uh, dietary uh, carbohydrates, etc. Are you sure? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Fine. Okay. Fine. So, I, I leave it to Lakshmi now. You are reading it from Google. Am I sure, Praveen? Yeah. You, you opened Google and you are reading it from there. No, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. Actually, before preparing us, uh, we read, ma'am, actually, uh, related to topic, we read some topics, ma'am. So, that... Uh... Okay. Okay. You read the topic. Oh, yes, ma'am. Actually, uh, during before the uh, before planning, we read, ma'am. Okay. So, the, I mean, your sentences were similar with the articles and everything. So, I was wondering about that. So, what do actually muscles do? Can you tell me that? Ma'am? What, what is happening with the protein in the muscles? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, yes, ma'am. In can the you... muscles, ma'am, can I answer, ma'am? Yeah, go ahead, yeah. In the muscles, uh, protein, proteins like troponin, tropomyosin, actin, and uh, myosin are required for contraction of the muscle, ma'am. Okay. Uh, uh, and also, uh, while uh, during every day of our action, there will be a tear in the muscle tissues, ma'am. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually, these proteins are uh, 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 made to repair the uh, tears in the muscles and uh, make it strong. Uh, 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 this process happens every day in our life. Okay. So, uh, so basically, you guys are saying that the carbohydrates are utilized first and then the fats are utilized, right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, what is happening in the keto diet? Uh, 
keto diet is that uh, where uh, uh, usually more fatty diet or more protein intake will be there from but due to the uh, this this uh, this increases the workload on the ke- uh, on the kidneys and it uh, it uh, keeps on building up more toxic uh, toxic ketones mom so that uh, kidneys uh, try uh, strive to get rid of these and uh, and th- this is uh, this is good only up to some extent but not all no no uh, all the way because I'm it incre- to, i'm coming back to aparna's question on uh, on this so uh, <clears throat> what i'm trying to understand is so in in keto diet we stop giving carbs right yes ma'am. Y- yes mom yes mom yes. and we are taking excess fat and excess protein right y- yes, yes mom uh, so body is converting to ketones where are these ketones coming from Uh, uh, they are the metabolic products of these proteins. My products of? Uh, I mean, you are asking any particularly um, metabolism or what? No, no, no. See, again, in keto diet, where are we getting the energy from? That's my question. Because we are not eating carbs, right? Where is the energy coming from? We are getting energy the from the fat. fat. Is, we are fatty. Are, yes, ma'am. Fatty acids get taking. Through. and then they get energy uh, from the fats and not from the proteins are you sure of that uh yes ma'am uh, i mean in cases where the glucose is not available uh, like uh, like ma'am said in cases of starvation uh, mm. and all will get the energy from uh, fatty acids ma'am okay thank you ma'am thank you team 3 so moving on let's go to team 4 sushma gongura from kamineni academy of medical sciences hyderabad team 4 are you ready Sushma from team four, are you ready? Do you want to go ahead with the next person? Yes, ma'am. Moving on, and let's. visible do go on with your presentation check your mic now ma'am is it audible now it's i mean uh, you're talking about me uh yes it is audible sushma go on okay thank you ma'am uh, good evening everyone my name is sushma Thank you, Simsma, Simsma, for giving us this opportunity. 
I'm here today to talk to you about enhancement of protein quality at low cost. So what is protein? It, it is an essential macronutrient made from amino acids. We all know that, which forms the basis of life. So tissues throughout the body require ongoing repair and replacement, and thus the body's protein is turning over constantly, being broken down and then resynthesized as needed. So why is protein important? To know why is protein important, we should know the consequences of protein deficiency. It affects the child at most crucial period of development, leading to dire consequences ranging from physical to cognitive growth and susceptible to infections. As we know, protein deficiency in India uh, leading to stunting, wasting and underweight of children under five. So, uh, according to European Food Safety Association said the population reference intake for protein to be 0 0.83 grams per kilogram body weight. So, here we have uh, some food grains containing protein. We know protein can uh, be plant derived or animal derived. So coming to plant derived, wheat, millets, legumes, soybean, white rice, and brown rice are the uh, protein containing food grains. So we have uh, some vegetables also which contain protein, but in a less amount. So then what about meat, milk, eggs, these all? These actually are a typical Indian family with annual income of less than one lakh can afford them or can afford them, but not to a full extent that can fulfill protein requirement of the entire family. So what we would like to suggest is TEF. It has a highly, highly protein content and it contains all essential amino acids that fulfill 12 to 13% of RDA. Central Food and Technological Research Institute brought these TEF grains from America uh, and did a research for four years and found that only two varieties of TEF, white and brown, are cult cultivated and suitable for Indian climatic conditions. Chia seeds are also a great source of protein. Quinoa, complete protein, contains all nine essential amino acids. So what Central Food and Technological Research Institute is suggesting is that it, they must, these grains must be given free to farmers, sensitize them, and blend it into traditional foods. When we blend them into our traditional foods, these become cheap and available to all uh, households. So as food grains provided by government can fulfill the protein needs of people. And yes, the government can provide high protein foods in excess to the people, limiting themselves to the budget. So what we suggest is spirulina plantasis cultivation in excess, which is affordable and yet to be included in public distribution system. So I think we should start mass cultivation of spirulina across India. So what is spirulina plantasis? It is a blue-green algae, one of the alternate sources of protein for human nutrition, it is a single cell protein. And this spirulina plantasis is a single cell protein. In our India, we have conventional agricultural production of food, cereals, pulses, vegetables, fruits, etc., which may not be able to meet the demand for food at which the population is increasing and they're suffering from hunger and malnutrition. So, yeah, but how do we, cull, uh, why are we, uh, suggesting spirulina because it has a fast growth rate independent of climate requires less water and land grows on fresh water as well as in wastewater and most importantly having high protein content and several other benefits including therapeutic purposes so how spirulina can be cultivated as you can see in this picture it can be cultivated in a concrete pond or tank monitoring the right ph value that is alkaline conditions and a temperature of 30 to 35 degrees centigrade and sunlight so we should make sure it is not contaminated. By taking all these measures, spirulina can be cultivated in abundance at low cost and to be included in public distribution system rather than commercializing the product. So I would like to conclude this session. Uh, protein participates in practically every process of a cell and uh, deficiency of the protein uh, can lead to uh, loss of uh, economic value. Uh, that is, uh, protein is necessary for human body to thrive and stay healthy. And in developing countries like India, it is important to look after the protein deficiency because it affects the economic growth of the country with an estimated adult productivity loss of 1.4% GDP. Thank you. Thank you, Sushma. Uh, coming to questions, Lakshmi ma'am, do you have any questions for uh, Sushma? Uh, yes, Sushma. Yes, what yes. you what you said about uh, spirulina, I think I like that. Uh, do you yes, have any further details about uh, how much of it are we using in India? Uh, actually, uh, 
very less ma'am i don't think spirulina is mostly cultivated in india i think only two states are cultivating spirulina and i don't know exactly the statements and what is the protein content per gram uh a uh, gram i think we have uh, sorry ma'am i don't know hello yeah uh, i think a single tablespoon of spirulina contains 7 grams of protein that is dried spirulina powder okay so one tablespoon you are saying right yes ma'am that one tablespoon is 15 grams 7 grams ma'am no yeah 15 yeah one tablespoon is uh, 7 grams that means uh, one tablespoon contains 15 grams of spirulina okay 15 grams of spirulina yes, contains 7 grams of protein yes ma'am that's what i'm trying to say okay. so um, so if it's not cultivated in india then what could what could be similar sources ma'am our, our traditional foods can be cultivated more so that okay. their cost they so that every household is affordable it is affordable by every household mm. in excess amount so that protein okay. What, can you give me an example of something that is uh, local food? For example, now we are staying in uh, TS and AP, right? What what could be a very cheap uh, protein product, which uh, is spinach? Local. Spinach can be man. Spinach? How much protein does it have? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 100 grams 2.9 gram protein ma'am i don't think that is that is it's not very high yes ma'am yes yes yeah so um ma'am dal yes can be, but it, i think it doesn't fulfill all the protein needs okay uh for example see you can take ragi flour okay and yes, we have uh, since we we are in, on the plateau deccan plateau you can just look at what are the local foods and uh, how much protein we are getting from each of the products and what are the grains which are easily available so probably yes, we, you can make a mixture of uh, these cereal grains and make sure that you have complete essential uh, proteins present in them and that's uh, that's the how you design a diet so i mean you did do spirulina but it's not available in the country right so it doesn't yes, make a point of us uh, learning about it of course we know about it it's a source but then again see again uh, milk uh, meat eggs yes, and also if you go to cereal grains you can look at uh, ragi yeah and you can look at yes, ma'am uh, chole yes, you can look at rajma these beans are not expensive right yes ma'am yeah so probably a mixture of these powders would be uh, economically viable for people living in ap and uh, uh, telangana state yes ma'am yes ma'am ma'am apatna ma'am do you have any questions for the four yes yes sushma uh, yes, sushma you european food safety association and uh, their values for the protein requirements and all that why did you have to talk about european food safety association do you know that in india also there is a organization uh, which gives us the recommended dietary allowances for indians yes ma'am what is the institute who gives the recommended dietary allowance for indians you quoted about uf uh, efsa Yes, ma'am. Yes. Like that, we have something in India. Yes, ma'am. I'm um, sorry, ma'am. I don't know. Okay, fine, fine. Turn on your video while answering the questions. Okay, fine. Yes, uh, then you were talking about teff, quinoa, and spirulina, and all that. I. I can you give me some uh, protein-rich sources uh, from Indian foods? Yes, ma'am. We have uh, dal, wheat, millets. Actually, jonna, sajja, uh, ragi, and we also have legumes, chickpeas, green peas. I think okay. these are also a great source of protein. 
Okay, okay. Can you tell me something about TEF? Yes, ma'am. Uh, actually, it is not uh, it is not an uh, Indian uh, food grain. It is act, uh, according to the uh, Central Food Research Team. Uh, it is from America. So they bought these TEF seeds from America and did a research here. So after this research, they found that only two varieties of TEF are suitable for Indian conditions to cultivate. So. Actually, they are trying uh, to traditionalize these foods so that it may be it can uh, solve the problem of protein deficiency as it is uh, as it has all the nine essential amino acids. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Sushma. Uh, moving on to team five, Arfa Devyani and Meghna Damrala from Malareddy Institute of Medical Sciences, Telangana. Good evening, one and all. I'm Meghna Damalla and my teammate is Arfa Devani and we are here to talk about protein in protein. Next slide. We are living in a fast-paced world. Lifestyle today is characterized by irregularly eating patterns, one where meals are skipped or consumed at inappropriate times of the day. This is added by stressful jobs and hectic life. We all have heard a very famous saying, you are what you eat. People say work smart, then hard. Similarly, eat smart. Eating smart is having a balanced diet. In constructing balanced diet, there are certain principles to be kept in mind. First and foremost is that the daily requirement of protein should be met. Fat requirement should be 15 to 30% of daily energy intake. Carbohydrates rich in natural fiber should consider the remaining food energy. And also, lastly, requirements of micronutrients should also be met. Fulfilling this first step, we have named our abstract, I have got 99 problems and protein ain't one. Typical diet in population is rich in carbs and low in protein, resulting in nutritional impairment. Overnutrition causes obesity, undernutrition causes protein energy malnutrition, whose severity can be assessed by wasting, stunting, and underweight. On an average, routine daily allowance of protein is 1 gram per kg per day in growing children and 0.8 grams per kg per day in grown adults. Most common cause of undernutrition is lack of high quality food, which is often related to high food prices and poverty. Cost effectiveness is very important in developing countries like India, where poverty is very prevalent. So it is important to meet the nutritional requirements in a low budget. Aims are to enhance protein in diet in a low budget, which are easily available and easily prepared. Nowadays, health consciousness has become a trend. Everyone wants to eat healthy food, but not all can afford. Those who can don't have enough time for preparation. So we have enhancing protein sources. We all know that moong and chana are high in protein, but we are not aware of the fact that with the same cause, just sprouting them would almost double the protein content with little time and effort. Surprising sources of proteins. Here are a few not so famous but highly nutrition and cost effective sources of proteins. Few of those are sesame oil cake, which is called telugupindi in Telugu. In the process of extraction of sesame oil by the mechanical press, semi defatted sesame cake with about 50% of protein and 15 grams of calcium per 100 grams of this pressed uh, cake is obtained. Even cow milk has just 123 milligrams of calcium per 100 ml of milk. It is also rich in crude fiber and is also easily available from mechanical press shops. Next is drumstick leaves or moringa or munagaku in Telugu. It is also a great source of protein in the available green leafy vegetables. It also has other high vitamins and minerals. Gram flour or basin. It is used in different recipes and we can make it interesting for uh, children to eat. And also the preparation time is less and has high source of protein. Among the cost effective fruits, 
guava and banana are rich in protein and also have other nutrients aiding for the bad the diet so we would like to conclude with the saying that the greatest wealth is health people who can afford can fulfill their daily nutritional requirement by taking protein shakes or other supplements so the for the one who cannot we have made two diet plans which are purely vegan with wholesome nutrition these apart from these milk eggs meat fish can also be added or replaced based on their food preferences uh, we have made a diet plan with 68 grams of protein at 75 rupees per day per person so with the vegan trend going on this can be helpful and people below poverty line also get rations from government which would furthermore reduce the cost of this diet so thank you for uh, sansa for giving us this great opportunity thank you team five uh, aparna ma'am do you have any questions for team five uh, yes arfa you have given a good presentation also uh, you were talking about uh, sprouting enhancing the protein uh, quantum yes ma'am so uh, what happens and how does protein increase when you sprout the grains ma'am like uh, uh, when the sprouting starts that means there is something growing uh, in out of it so because of the energy requirements for that seed it starts producing the uh, nutrients it uh, it needs so our uh, protein is one of which it requires uh, so it uh, the amount gets doubled the amount gets doubled yeah the protein content uh, is getting doubled okay okay fine uh, another i have one one more question you have given a very good uh, source of protein the oil seed cakes yes ma'am Can you please tell me about the availability of these oil seed uh, cakes? Yes, ma'am. Actually, uh, there are so many people who go uh, with the seeds to get the uh, to get the oil pressed. And uh, what we get is we only get oil, but uh, the rest of the cake is not. Uh, we don't get it. They keep it themselves. So, from the area where this mechanical press uh, shops are available. the they can be easily available in city as well as rural as well as urban areas they are uh, almost in our uh, locality they don't need special uh, very great equipment it's just a small shop okay fine i think dr lakshmi can uh, ask the questions now lakshmi you have to unmute yourself Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, again about uh, sprouting. Uh, I just uh, sorry to put you on the spot, but I'm just uh, asking you like, uh, what is ha really happening in sprouting, and why is there uh, more availability of proteins? Yes, ma'am. Like this in the sprout, that means something is uh, uh, required for it to grow. Like when uh, even uh, when children are growing, like mm. we need more nutrition. okay we need to take it from outside but plants they usually take it from the water or sunlight and how are they uh, start producing ma'am uh, yet for themselves to grow yeah I, okay so i would like to why why it is is because uh, when when it sprouts right there is something called as uh, phytic acid in all these uh, grains which uh, when when the sprouting starts this goes down and there is more availability there is more absorption of protein and the other nutrients rather than uh, the seed providing it uh, when uh, when the sprouting starts there's lower amount of phytic acid in it so uh, those phytic acids are big these are basically anti uh, nutrients so these anti nutrients what they do is they prevent absorption of our nutrients uh, from the food so they are low amount when we sprout them rather than the whole grain so that is the reason thank you ma'am for the information yeah, yeah. that's it thank you well, thank you team 5 and thank you guys for taking interest in this topic and making wonderful presentations Uh, but i know you are you all are eagerly waiting for the results but it should wait for some more time uh, so i will give i'll hand it over to rachna 
Thank you. Thank you, Yashaswini. Um, I must say that all the presentations were wonderful and the participants deserve a special appreciation for all their efforts in preparing such effective diet plans. Uh, so protein deficiency is one major health concern. And the major purpose of our event is to highlight the importance of protein in our, in our regular diets. Today with us, we have two experts, Dr. Aparna Kuna Ma'am and Dr. Lakshmi Kilaru Ma'am, who will enlighten us more about the subject. Uh, dear viewers, please do not hesitate to comment your questions in the live chat box. Our team is mo monitoring the chat box constantly. Most of your questions will be answered by the panelists at the end. Uh, with no further delay, I would like to request Lakshmi Ma'am to take over the session. Thank you. Can you hear me, Rachita? Can you see my screen? Hello? Yes, ma'am, I can hear you. Can you see my screen? No, ma'am. We can see your screen now, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, so um, I'm going to speak a little bit about uh, the introduction of protein and what is protein and why the functions of protein in our body, followed by uh, what happens in immunodeficiency disorders. And uh, then uh, further, Aparna will continue on the sources of protein and digestibility factors of protein. Uh, so uh, it's nothing new, but if you guys have anything uh, more for me to elaborate, you can ask me after the presentation. So I'm just going to start you with the introduction of protein. So protein, as we all know, is a very important macronutrient. Macronutrient is something which, are, which we are taking in the larger amounts. So it's a complex high molecular uh, weight organic compound, which consists of, basically, we all know that it's made up of uh, amino acids, and it uh, performs important functions of the body. <laughs> So uh, protein, it forms approximately 20% of the human body. Uh, and uh, in that, 50% is present in the muscles, 20% uh, in the bones, and 10% uh, on the skin. So in the muscles, you all know where it is present. 20% uh, in the bone, it helps in uh, bone growth, so we all know that. And 10% in the skin, which is uh, basically collagen. So, and the rest is in other parts of the body. So uh, the term protein in uh, Dutch uh, was coined by, the, uh, uh, by a Dutch scientist in um, 1883. It means to take it the first place. So um, since the protein is the most important macronutrient, the scientist said that you have to take this uh, before you take anything else in your diet. So uh, we need to place uh, protein among uh, the highest in the food pyramid, if you ask me. So coming to the chemical composition, and basically protein is made up of uh, amino acids, and these amino acids are linked to each other with the peptide bonds. So in nature, there are about uh, 20, uh, 500 different amino acids, but only 20 appear. Why? Because there are only 20 which are used to form the genetic code of the protein. So what are amino acids? Amino acids, again, um, when you see the chemical structure, they contain an amino group, a carboxyl function group, and a side chain. So the um, um, amino group and the uh, functional, uh, carboxyl function group stays, stays the same, and there's only change in the side chain, uh, which makes each amino acid different. So again, this contains carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. 
So even our carbohydrates contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But the only difference between our carb, uh, carbohydrate and our protein is the presence of nitrogen, which makes them an excellent source. So uh, this is a classification of our uh, amino acids. So they are essential, they are conditionally essential, and they are non-essential. So essential, as we all say, they cannot be synthesized in the body, but we need it externally through through the diet. So that's why when uh, we coin a term like complete protein or an incomplete protein, we need to see that it satisfies all these requirements of all these proteins, uh, amino acids here. Conditional is when they can be made from precursors or they should be supplied from the diet. These contains an arginine, cysteine, glycine, proline, and tyrosine. Non-essential, which the body can make it if it is not available in the diet. Examples are alanine, aspartame, aspartic acid, glutamic acid, glutamine, and serine. Now, coming to the main uh, important uh, thing for the protein is functions. So we all know that uh, protein is needed for the growth of the body. So uh, starting from the cell, for example, uh, the cell, the cellular, cellular form from the uh, zygote to its cell division, uh, formation of fetus, and also formation of a baby. After the baby is born, till a certain uh, growth phase, so like, for example, as, as long as there is a growth phase, like when we go, grow taller, why is this happening is uh, cell division, for example, if you take a fetus, what is happening in the fetus is there is, uh, from the zygote stage, there is cell division happening and that's why the fetus is growing in your body. So they say pregnant women have to take in more amount of protein, why? Because because of uh, the functions of the protein. So let's discuss this. So it is, help, it is helpful for growth and maintenance. For example, aside from water, proteins are the most important abundant molecules found in the body. So it forms a major structural component in the, cell of the, in the cells in the body. For example, muscles, your body organs, hair, and also skin. And next is energy. It is a major source of energy. Okay, it, uh, one gram of protein gives you about uh, four kilocalories of energy in the body. And uh, it also uh, is required for cell division, uh, for mitosis, and it forms a major uh, part in protein synthesis, that is formation of DNA and RNA, and uh, everything in place. And also on the chromosomal level, it uh, forms specific proteins are involved in contributing or dividing the cell, uh, cell particles. For example, it makes sure that uh, the chromosomes and, and genes are distributed equally between the two cells. So if the mitosis doesn't occur properly, then there is haphazard distribution or division of the cell, which in turn leads to tumors, etc., which, uh, which again leads to cancer. So protein is very important in cell division and in protein synthesis. And it also forms a structural matrix framework of bones, teeth, collagen. Uh, in the skin, it's collagen, actin and myosin in the muscles. And we all know that uh, protein is the basis for all the enzymes. So when I say enzymes, all the enzymes in, involved for digestion and also the coenzymes which are required for the biochemical reactions. So uh, as you all have studied uh, gly glycolysis and other pathways, we have something called as a coenzyme, which is uh, a part of each of these uh, reactions. So all these coenzymes are coming from the proteins. So if you do not have, do not consume enough protein, you will not have the coenzymes which are required in glycolysis, which is a metabolic pathway for carbohydrates. So the enzymes are most important to digest your proteins, digest your carbohydrates, and also digest your fats and everything else. And also next is hormones. So hormones are also made up of proteins. All your hormones, including insulin, and al also uh, take anything for, from your reproduction, reproductive hormones, uh, any hormone is made up of uh, protein. Then it also is important for oxygen transportation, your hemoglobin. What is your hemoglobin? It is a protein as such. Uh, so if you do not have enough uh, protein, your oxygen uh, traveling capacity in the body is also reduced. And next, it helps in transport of nutrients in the intestine. And as it has specific protein for each, um, each available nutrient. For example, reti retinol building protein to carry retinol. Or uh, lipoproteins for carrying uh, fat. That is also a protein. And also a lot of ions like copper and zinc. 
and it also helps in defense that is your immune response which is a, a specific antibodies are formed for a specific antigen then it also helps in detox detoxification uh, detoxification the cells it help, helps in uh, phagocytosis and also it helps in um, the toxins in the liver are detoxified uh, through your enzymes of the liver and it also helps in formation of new blood cells so uh, coming to protein deficiency so uh, protein deficiency malnutrition has been studied uh, in various countries and uh, through centuries so protein deficiency malnutrition uh, is also called as pem it has two varieties mostly it's quashiocor and marasmus and also marasmic quashiocor uh, so uh, we'll be studying a little bit about the science of quashiocor um, it usually is apathy uh, diarrhea inactivity uh, failure to grow there's a flaky skin fatty liver and also edema the swelling in the bell uh, on the belly and the legs why is this swelling is because of the action of lipoxygenase or it is called as arachidonic acid to form leukotrienes so this pm is common worldwide in children and in adults and it accounts for about approximately 6 million deaths annually so in the industrial world pm is predominantly seen in hospitals and is associated with disease and now mostly nowadays it's also found in the elderly next let's go to immune immune deficiency disorders so what is this immune deficiency disorders uh, since i spoke about uh, why protein is uh, necessary for um, immunity uh, because of the functions and because of its function of forming uh, your uh, amino acids and because of its function of forming your antibodies it's mostly important for immune deficiency disorders so the most of the amino deficiency disorders which occur uh, is because of the absence of body's immune response. response so what includes your immune system the immune system is made up of lymphoid tissue it is also made up of your bone marrow your lymph nodes parts of the spleen and also gastric uh, gastrointestinal tract uh, protein and cells in the blood also part, uh, form a part of your immune system and when we have immune system there are two things that uh, are in place one is the antigens and second is the antibodies so immune system helps to protect the body from harmful substances which are called which are called as antigens for these antigens antigens include bacteria viruses toxins cancer cells and foreign blood uh, foreign blood or tissues from other person or other species so when the body de detects this antigen it forms something called as antibodies so antibodies uh, are there to destroy these harmful substances there is also another immune uh, response in the body which is called as phagocytosis what is phagocytosis is engulfing the engulfing or destroying the foreign substances which is of danger so immunodeficiency disorders may affect any part of the immune system uh, so in conditions where uh, wherein there are uh, white blood cells called as t lymphocytes or uh, b lymphocytes if they do not function properly then there, there is no proper immune system in the body so there are two types of immune immune deficiency disorders one is inherited and next is the acquired so when you have in inherited immune deficiency disorders the t cells may cause repeated uh, infections candida infections and they are in, uh, inherited combined uh, combined immune deficiency affects both the t cells and b cells so it may be deadly within first year of life if it is not treated what is immuno suppressed uh, suppressed diseases immuno deficiency disorders due to medicines that weaken the immune system such as corticosteroids so this is also a side effect of ke uh, chemotherapy uh, during cancer treatment what is acquired immune deficiency it may be because of your diseases such as hiv aids and also in case of malnutrition so even many cancer uh, also causes immune deficiency in diseases what is the role of amino acids so if you have proper protein and if you have proper uh, amino acids in the body that is if you have the right amount of essential amino acids uh, it also it helps in activation of your t lymphocytes your b lymphocytes and also macrophages and in production of antibodies and cytokines it then and it thereby helps in catabolic process when i say catabolic process it helps in basically uh, breaking down of your uh, complex molecules into simpler molecules and helps in digestion and absorption 
Now, uh, these days, uh, we are all into COVID uh, times. So, a uh, lot of uh, doctors around the world, everywhere, and out of also a lot of research is saying that uh, during COVID or when you're recovering from COVID, you need to eat a protein, uh, high protein diet. So, um, why is, is this? Is because protein intake remains important throughout all phases during this illness. It op optimizes your immune system, it replaces your damaged tissues, it strengthens the muscles, it for helps in formation of antibodies and regulates the uh, WBC. It also maintains a positive nitrogen balance and it also helps in catabolic process. So patients must include uh, a portion of protein which is rich in pulses, legumes, yogurt or curd and peanuts and also any other food that has high protein in each meal. They, if they are a non-vegetarian, they can include uh, red meat. They could also include uh, lean meats such as chicken and fish and also a good source of protein such as quinoa if they can afford. How much of protein do they need? They need at least minimum 75 grams of protein per day to recover from this disease. And also, I, I included some of the immune-boosting foods uh, which uh, are rich in vitamin C. So there are some vegetables also which are rich in vit uh, vitamin C, for example, your green peppers or capsicum. And uh, uh, you also have your broccoli. Broccoli is also rich in vitamin C. And also your fruits, uh, you can take an amla shot every day. Uh, also your oranges, uh, guava, all these are rich in vitamin C, oranges, tomatoes, and also include zinc rich foods such as your beans, anything which is dried beans such as rajma, your chole, everything, and your peas. And also uh, include nutraceutical rich foods which are uh, like turmeric. Turmeric contains curcumin which is a nutraceutical. Uh, cinnamon, cinnamon is, uh, cinnamon is also very good for your health and uh, also include ginger and also include sulfur containing compounds such as garlic and uh, onion. These also fight against diseases. So uh, that's how much I've done and the next topic will be over to Aparna and if you guys have any questions you can show. Is the moderator there? Yes, ma'am. I think some network uh, connectivity might be the problem over there, ma'am. Uh, okay. I request, uh, thank you ma'am, uh, it, uh, it was a really nice presentation from your side and uh, I request uh, Dr. Aparna Makuna ma'am to present her presentation ma'am. Okay, I think uh, once Dr. Lakshmi stops her screen sharing, I can do it. Okay. Oh yeah, fine. Okay, is it is it visible? Yeah. Okay, fine. So thank you, Simsa, Telangana chapter and AP chapter for uh, calling us for your webinar as jury members and as uh, speakers for your today's webinar on protein. So protein actually is very, very important, but then uh, it's been spoken for many decades now, but still, uh, I still remember when I was a student Way back in 1990s, also protein was a very important topic, especially for our examinations and all that, because we were talking, we were studying, and we were listening to how protein affects, like Dr. Lakshmi has told already, that protein deficiency, we have been studying about parasmus, squash, yogurt, and all that. But the irony is that even till today, uh, we still continue speaking about protein because there is a lot of protein deficiency or there is excess of protein in some cases. So protein actually is a very important and a significant topic and Simsa has, token, uh, has uh, taken a very good topic. And I'm glad that the medical students also, uh, in spite of their subjects like biochemistry and all that in the second year, I think now all of them are final year students and they have come up with very good presentations. I congratulate 
all the students on nice presentations uh, i will add on to what dr lakshmi has already told and i am making my presentation very simple because i i assume that you have much more greater knowledge than uh, what we all have so to start with balanced diet so since ages we have been talking about balanced diet but in between there are you know people who crop up and they keep talking about different kinds of diets so you open up the newspaper and you know on a sunday or so nice colorful pictures on next wise that diets keep coming and there are many people who keep recommending sometimes high fat sometimes high protein somebody says low fat high protein you know many kinds of diet somebody says dash diet so different kinds of diets keep coming up now and then and then you know uh, it fades away eventually also because ultimately the truth and the fact is that balanced diet is very very important for everybody to ensure proper health so whatever said and done whatever kinds of diet keeps coming in keep going out and keeps fading out balanced diet is ultimately a fact which has to be followed by everybody now coming to the balanced diet uh, some some of the students i think uh, uh, pravina pravin kasina and sushma they were showing some nice attractive plates uh, where they have shown a plate which has got 25% of protein that is exactly right now if we look at balanced diet we will have to consume very good amount of cereals and millets uh, along with cereals and millets we will have to take very good amount of protein now coming to the protein uh, the sources of protein they include pulses if a person is a vegetarian person and if a person is a non vegetarian person they can include eggs sweet foods and all that then apart from these sources we have milk which is a complete total uh, you know very good biological value protein high biological value protein egg milk and all those are called as high biological value protein because the available bioavailability of the protein is much better in these kinds of foods apart from that uh, you have the other uh, foods which will contribute to this balanced diet palette so coming to the balanced diet cereals and proteins they constitute a major major portion of our diet cereals are bigger portion but then please don't forget that cereals millets they also contribute to the considerable quantity of protein especially in india if you look at the plate of an average indian you will see that there is a plate and there's a heap full of rice or you know or a bunch of chapatis and very little amount of you know vegetable or some kind of pickle or whatever adjoining or adjunct uh, dish is there which in which says that it is cereals and millets though not very rich source of protein they contribute the major amount of protein in indian diet which is the reason why cereals and millets in spite of talking uh, in terms of carbohydrate rich and all that but for indians since our plate consists the majority of cereals and millets they do contribute to a lot of protein apart from that of course protein rich foods are anyway there so if people can balance it with very good amount of pulses uh, meat foods milk and milk products like curd and all those then we will have sufficient amount of protein in diet now if we look at the food pyramid this is the food pyramid given by uh, national institute of nutrition so our sushma ji and all uh, they were talking about the efsa food pyramids and all those but then we have our own very food pyramid being given by national institute of nutrition which is a uh, you know uh, institute which comes under your very own indian council of medical research so what they say is we will have to consume adequate quantity of our uh, uh cereals and millets and then we will have we can consume liberal amounts of fruits vegetables and all those things so if we look at the cereals millets and all that as i already told you they contribute to the major source of protein apart from the other foods like meat and all those in india when we talk about food security where we talk about three a's that is availability affordability and accessibility to our indian population uh the accessibility and affordability is a little bit of problem with meat foods that is the reason why we will have to go for uh, plant based uh, food sources uh, protein sources but unfortunately even the plant uh, based sources also if you talk about rice and all that our food subsidies the food uh, public distribution food distribution systems and all they give rice for 2 rupees a kg to 10 rupees a kg and then you have a white ration card you will be given huge quantity of rice 
but then you know uh, protein content is missing so the affordability and accessibility also goes down because i am talking in terms of the major amount of indian population who fall as average or below average uh, income group levels so our food pyramids we talk actually about consumption of high amount of proteins uh, sorry high amount of uh, cereals and millets which will contribute to major amount of protein then apart from that we have the recommended dietary allowances these are given by again national institute of nutrition icmr and uh, according to these recommended dietary allowances it is said that a man who weighs around uh, 60 kg uh, body weight and uh, with sedentary moderate or heavy work they will have to consume at least at least 60 grams of protein per single day whereas if you talk about women uh we the women are told uh, to consume about 55 grams of protein per day and if the woman is a pregnant woman she has to consume another additional 23 grams of protein per day whereas a woman who is lactating between 0 to 6 months another additional 19 grams of protein in addition to the 55 grams of protein which is already recommended and uh, when the woman is under 6 to 12 months lactating period she will have to increase the protein content by another 13 grams to the uh, additional 55 grams now the same protein uh, very recently this year there was a new release of recommended dietary allowances which talks about uh, 54 grams of protein uh, per day instead of 60 grams however whatever said and done for men it is between 54 and 60 grams whereas for women it is between 46 and 55 grams for pregnant women it is an additional uh, 23 grams of protein up to second uh, trimester and then after that in third trimester it is said that another 10 grams has to be added now if we talk about infants uh, they will have to consume at least 1.16 to 1.7 grams of uh, protein per kg per day whereas in children it is ranging between 16 grams of protein per day up to 30 grams of protein coming to boys and girls of different age groups you can see it is already given here uh, it is ranging between 39 40 54 51 61 61 and 55 grams of protein per single day now this is what is being recommended by the indian uh, council of medical research through national institute of nutrition now if we look at the dietary diversity in india if you look at the protein consumption now this the second graph talks about the protein consumption so here we have the suggested intake and the actual intake so the yellow line is the actual intake of protein whereas that blue or purple line whatever is seen on your screen is the suggested intake that means this is the rda and this is the actual consumption so adult moderate man he is consuming lesser than what is being suggested with regards to the pulses as well as legumes and then if you look at the other protein sources the meat foods and all that even here it is the same the actual intake is much much lesser than the suggested intake same is the case with the milk and milk products if you look at the indian uh, scenario we are very huge producer country for milk and milk products in spite of that if you look at the per capita consumption of uh, milk products then again you know the actual intake is much much lesser than what is actually to be taken this is in terms of adult moderate man now it is same again in case of adult moderate women where you can see that the suggested intake is higher whereas the actual intake is lower in terms of pulses and legumes same is the case with the flesh foods it is much much lesser than the suggested intake and same uh, is the case with your milk and milk products now if you look at children and uh, here it is more or less uh, better that is you know the pulses the pulses and legumes the actual intake and the suggested intake are more or less similar whereas the actual intake is much lesser in terms of meat and uh, now if you look at the milk products and all those also you see that the uh, milk products is little better now in children the reason why you will see that there is not much of difference is majority of the times up to one year of life children consume only milk which is a very good source of protein so we are meeting more or less some amount better amount as compared with the adult moderate man and adult uh, moderate women so if you look at the dietary diversity in india we are consuming much lesser amount of protein than what is actually recommended 
and when when i'm talking about india and indians all the participants who are there today in this webinar i think around 25 participants i can see here including me and lakshmi ma'am i'm sure we are also falling short of the protein requirements because we don't really consume the required amount of protein for many many reasons so that protein deficiency will be there of course it will it will be seen in some it will not be seen in everybody but yes definitely we are consuming much much lesser amount of protein as compared to what is actually recommended to us now the reasons are many there's a big issue i mean debate we can have a big debate on that also now if you look at the milk production per capita uh, you know uh, availability and all that if you look at the cow milk and buffalo milk and the total available milk and all that as i told you we are producing huge amount of milk which is a high biological value protein source in spite of that if you look at the previous slide we are consuming much much lesser amount of milk which is a very good protein source leave about the flesh foods like meat foods and all that which are very expensive only some people can afford and india uh, 95% of the population is said to be vegetarian because when we talk about meat foods and protein in terms of meat we consume once or twice in a week only and even those who consume there are some populations who consume uh, meat foods almost on a regular basis but then you know that is not a full fledged meat they mix it with the you know some kinds of vegetables and they eat it along with the rice and all that so the average consumption of meat we can say that we consume it weekly once or twice so the meat foods consumption is much lesser now the milk production we are highest in the entire world globally we are number one with milk production in spite of that we consume much much lesser amount of milk and milk products which is another reason why we consume less amount of protein now this is the milk production and per capita availability the per capita availability is there because every single day because we are producing more amount of milk the availability is there but then we are not consuming it if you i mean i was talking about that food security three a's availability accessibility and affordability because of all those three a's there is a mismatch between what is available and what is being consumed which is the reason why we are ending up consuming much lesser protein every single day including you all and me also now coming to the sources of the protein uh sources of protein as i showed the uh, the indian dietic association rda that is the recommended dietary association uh, allowances they require the requirements they keep varying along with the age the physiological status for children during growth and all that it is different for women during pregnancy and lactation there is a very huge demand of protein for various reasons now stress is another uh, factor where protein requirements keep fluctuating a lot because you all know being medical students you know that stress is the mother of all disorders and when there is huge amount of stress there is huge amount of breakdown of protein in terms of amino acid breakdown and all those which increases the demand of protein now you tell me living living in an urban area or being a medical student when you have your examinations and all that you you will be having huge amount of stress with the kind of syllabus you will have to study the examinations you will have to face and all that so during examinations if you question yourself do you take required amount of protein to meet the stress level to meet the breakdown of the amino acids which is happening in your body because somebody has uh, said that uh, we don't have protein uh, resources or saving in our body so uh, are we meeting the demands as per the requirement this is a big question mark we are actually not so there is huge amount of protein requirement which keeps varying with age physiological status as well as stress then apart from that very huge amount of proteins is, uh, are required by the growing infants and children pregnant women because there is a lot of demand and uh, meeting the protein requirements the best biological uh, biological uh, proteins or high value proteins are milk meat fish and eggs so these are all animal sources which are uh, very good sources of protein and coming to the plant sources all the pulses all the legumes are very rich sources of protein and uh, definitely animal proteins are of high quality because they provide all the essential amino acids in right proportions whereas the plant protein sources are not of very good quality protein for the simple reason that they keep uh, having you know a variation in the amino acid content 
which is the reason why uh, we will have to have a very good combination of cereals as well as pulses and legumes so that there will be a complementary protein uh, availability when you consume both uh, combination of cereals and the, as well as uh, pulses which is the reason why you will have to go for a combination of cereals millets pulses everything so that you have all the required amino acids which will complement each other and then you have sufficient amount of protein now uh, coming to the sources of uh, proteins for vegetarians all the lentils which are already which are called as dals that is arhar dal tuwar dal kandi pappu minam pappu pesara pappu all these dals are fantastic sources of protein so apart from those you have this kidney beans rajma chickpeas and all those which are very widely considered as power houses of protein apart from that we also have these vip protein sources that is your nuts almonds you know all the um, Uh, green peas quinoa you know soya milk oats chia seeds and all those things which are very very good sources of protein so coming to this protein sources uh, the affordability again is a very important factor so if a person is can afford meat foods definitely are good as uh, as compared with the plant sources of protein now this is another uh, problem especially in some people uh, we have lot of youth nowadays they they keep looking at uh, hrithik roshan or uh, uh, what is that shroff uh, tiger shroff and all these people and they have got nice chiseled bodies so there are lots of uh, young boys and uh, you know all these people who keep craving for uh, getting that kind of chiseled body so knowingly or i unknowingly i have absolutely no clue when they go to these gyms and all these places where they work, keep going on workouts they keep consuming a huge amount of protein as supplement so these supplements are being consumed uh, in a very high quantity without even you know seeking the intervention of you know a nutritionist or a doctor i really don't know whether doctors can really spare a lot of time in giving a dietary counseling and diet guidance but then yeah without any proper guidance these people keep consuming a huge amount of protein supplement and these protein supplements if they are not you know uh, combined with proper balance in the diet with lots of water and with proper attention to the urea content and you know the creatinine content which is being secreted by the kidneys there is a huge amount of threat when somebody consumes huge amount of supplements so excess intake of protein is very very hazardous it doesn't come all of a sudden it's not it's not like fever where you know immediately today you have fever so you it's it's seen whereas this excess amount of protein it is not shown like your fever cold or cough where within a day or two you will know what is happening silently it keeps affecting the body you will see that the kidney keeps damaged and then eventually you will end up with many more complications so excess of protein in the diet definitely leads to different kinds of problems it will start with bad breath weight gain constipation diarrhea dehydration excess amount of stone formation and all those ultimately leading to kidney damage majority of the times if you don't you know uh, look at yourself on right time there is an irreversible damage and it will also lead to different kinds of heart problems so it is very very important to eat the right amount of protein through balanced diet rather than supplements unless it is required otherwise you should not really go for such amount of proteins which is not really recommended consuming a balanced diet will definitely help and aid in consuming required amount of uh, protein now uh, from your presentations i thought let me just uh, take up some uh, snippets from your presentations and then cover the topic on protein so team 1 uh, miss navyata and team they were talking about sustainable protein diet animal protein and plant protein coming to sustainability of protein diet see to to produce 1 kg of uh, meat food and 1 kg of plant food the amount of water which is used for producing 1 kg of uh, meat is more than 5000 liters 5000 liters whereas for uh, producing 1 kg of some kind of millets or you know any plant uh, based sources it will be somewhere between 1000 to 2500 liters of water which means we are using our natural resources 
so for producing animal based protein sources through meat and flesh foods we are shelling out a lot of uh, water to rear the animal and to get that protein source and apart from that there is huge amount of greenhouse gas emission which affects the ozone layer and which affects the planet i think there was uh, one group who was talking about the sustainable plant protein that is uh, navyata and all these people and they were talking about the planet earth and all that so if you really want to save the planet earth plant sources definitely are much much better than animal sources and uh, Uh, though animal protein is of high biological value because of the high, uh, damage which is happening to the planet earth in terms of uh, in terms of ozone layer depletion and greenhouse gas emission plant sources are very very good however these days the latest research talks in terms of lab grown meat which is being grown there through tissue culture and all those those are equally good so in future the next 10 years we might uh, our uh, suguna chicken and all these people they might be selling as uh, lab grown meat and uh, believe me they are much much better and equally at par with the animal and flesh based uh, meat sources so regarding sustainability plant based uh, protein sources are definitely far better in terms of saving the plant planet and uh, animal foods are a uh, little below that that is one then the team 2 madhu tejasvi and team uh from uh, nizamabad and baskara medical college they were talking about uh, complete and incomplete protein and uh, they were talking about the cost of the diet plans also so cost of diet plans definitely is a very important uh, area to be uh, spoken about because protein sources whether it is pulses or whether it is meat sources they are pretty expensive as compared to your cereals or millets as i told you 1 kg of rice it varies between 10 rupees in a public distribution to around 40 to 50 rupees your sona masuri in a more supermarket or any other supermarket coming to the meat sources they range anywhere between you know 150 rupees up to 300 400 and if it is uh, you know different kinds of meat you have something around 6 700 rupees also so the cost and affordability are very very important now if you look at the plant sources your dals and all that they come from 90 rupees to maximum of 120 rupees so in terms of cost also plant based protein sources are definitely uh, lesser uh, you know they have a lesser price as compared to the animal based sources however egg which costs something around 5 uh, rupees can be consumed every single day because one egg a day definitely can ensure at least very good amount of protein uh, for uh, every individual one egg a day and one glass of milk a day can help us meet the protein requirements apart from the plant based sources that is your dals and all those so diet plans and uh, cost of protein sources also are very very important and uh, complete and incomplete protein uh, mostly it is the complete protein are your milk meat egg and all those things and incomplete proteins are the or uh, plant based proteins because they have uh, some lacking amino acids which can be complemented when you combine with your cereals millets and all those then we had the team 3 that is uh, praveen kasina and team i think uh, miss bavishya bopanna was uh, presenting so here we were talking about protein sparing action now i when i was uh, talking in my presentation the plate if we look at in indian diet we have a very huge heap of rice in our plate and very little amount of dal or curry and all those things uh, that is the way which we are eating now protein sparing action is something uh, you know where if you don't uh, take sufficient amount of uh, you know uh, protein in your diet then you have the other sources of uh, you know uh, your meal that is your carbohydrate the breakdown of proteins and all those cannot be met very very properly then you were also talking about quinoa now these days quinoa is being given lot of publicity especially the urban consumers and you know all these uh, health food shops and all those people they are uh, selling a lot of this quinoa seed quinoa seed is not our grain it is a grain which is having its origin somewhere in other countries and initially i still remember the price of quinoa grains used to be something like 700 to 800 rupees which has eventually come down to 600 rupees 500 rupees now it has still come down but let me tell you 
quinoa grain has got very good amount of protein but where our very own millet grains like bajra you know jowar the little millet the foxtail millet the barnyard millet all these uh, you know minor millets they are at par with quinoa so let us promote more of our indian grains than these uh, foreign grains now when we are banning all these chinese products why not quinoa i am not talking about banning but let us promote more of our uh, indian millet sources which are equally good and which have equally good, good uh, quantity of protein but unfortunately they are not spoken about so in future you know the other teams or whenever you go for some any competitions and all that uh, please try talking about the indian millet grains which are excellent sources of protein we have protein content anywhere between 5 to 12 in all these minor grains which is equal to quinoa so let's be more indian on that terms then we have uh, team 4 sushma g and team uh, here uh, uh i would like to tell that rather than you know telling about american association who speak who gives their uh, recommended allowances or european associations who gives the allowances of protein we india also have a very uh, big scientific body which keeps constantly working on how to revise so today we have our indian council of medical research who keeps recommended uh, recommending the dietary allowances for indians Uh, through national institute of nutrition so if we talk about rda recommended dietary allowances we can talk more about the indian recommended dietary allowances rather than referring to the uh, other country referring so, uh, sources now here again to the same team ms sushma and everybody i would like to tell that teff which is also called as hemp flour and all those teff quinoa spirulina these are exotic sources of uh, protein and because they are grains which are you know uh, brought from other countries they are definitely expensive and we have much less cost effective sources in which are available in india spirulina of course as a supplement can be taken wherever there is a huge demand and where a person has to really be fed with good amount of protein then spirulina can be given but believe me spirulina cannot be given to all age groups and to all you know uh, conditions of health so teff quinoa and spirulina are good sources but again i would still say indian sources definitely are much much better then the last team uh, team 5 arfa devani meghna damarla and others um i appreciate uh, because you were talking about indianized sources like oil seed cake i still remember about two decades back people would really take the oil seeds like uh, the ground nut sesame and all that to something called as chakki or ganuga in telugu and they would expel the oil and they would uh, take this uh, remnant oil seed cakes and they would consume it and as they have rightly said oil seed cakes are very very excellent sources of protein however the keeping quality of those are very uh, not up to the mark so we will have to really process them properly so that uh, very good content of uh, protein can be utilized from these oil seed cake and as they have rightly mentioned uh, cost effectiveness of the diet is very very important and uh, we definitely can have a cost effective source of protein through proper balancing of cereals millets pulses and egg and milk every single day then apart from that uh, sprouting enhancing protein dr lakshmi also told about the mechanism on how sprouting will enhance the protein uh, so all these uh, processing conditions can definitely uh, make sure that the bioavailability of protein will be there so this is in brief about uh, protein the recommended dietary allowances of protein then uh, the plant sources vegetable sources and your presentations and my suggestions so if you have any questions i would like to take the questions thank you ma'am thank you lakshmi ma'am and abana ma'am we have actually learned a lot new information today so first question uh, these are the questions from audience so the first question i would like to ask this to abana ma'am ma'am you have actually mentioned about a uh, high protein diet dangers those hidden dangers that we that we might encounter so but i would like to say uh, during this lockdown there are many of us who are uh, who are actually concentrating on building our bodies so what is the safe amount of using those protein uh, supplements ma'am simple thing is uh, there is something called as uh, you have a calculation or a formula 
zero point eight grams to one gram per kg body weight. Zero point eight uh, to medical students, I am sure mathematics is a tough challenge. So let us take it as one gram per kg body weight. So Rachna, say for example, I'll calculate it for myself. If my weight is fifty kgs, I will have to consume fifty grams of protein per day. So now you take your weight in kgs, and uh, your required allowance is so many number of grams. So if a person is weighing seventy kgs, then the required dietary allowance for them is seventy grams per day. All right. I think there's some connectivity issue with mom. Okay. I will proceed with the next question, which I would be directing it towards uh, Lakshmi, ma'am. Ma'am, soya beans being the low cost, high source of protein. What is the safest amount that we can consume? Because they say soya beans lead to gynecomastia. So I would like to. like you to uh, share your opinion on this uh i see well uh, this uh, gynecomastia if you are not consuming anything else but you're consuming only soy say for example monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday you're consuming soy are we doing that no right so it contains isoflavones isoflavones are good for your heart so and also okay gynecomastia but again it's it it's good for men um, women who are uh, in their menstrual uh, sorry um aparna give me the word uh, women who have reached uh, 50s and 60s menopause menopause it's usually good for them but uh, uh, see Uh, soy again, soy and soy products are actually uh, local uh, for China, right? So they consume tofu and uh, they have uh, con uh, consume soy milk and stuff like that. Uh, soy, I agree, is a good a good source of protein and also it has uh, phytoestrogens, um, which uh, isoflavones and phytoestrogens. But it consume it in maybe you're taking it. Uh, you can consume it, for example, if you're consuming tofu uh, in this week. Say for example, you're taking tofu um, in on Monday. Then probably uh, three or four days later, you can consume a soy flour um, uh, chapati or soy flour atta. See, that's the only thing in India we consume a lot. So you do not need to worry about overconsumption of soy in India. And uh, coming to the question that you guys were asking about uh, Aparna about uh, your uh, protein consumption, how much should we take? You should always, I think, uh, see whenever you are going in for a diet and you want a certain kind of body, you know, uh, or you are trying to gain muscle, or for example, if you are trying to lose muscle, whatever the case. I think uh, like a profession go, comes to a doctor, like an uh, you know, if you have broken bones and they go to an orthopedician, you need a dietary requirement. i think you should uh, consult a, a professional uh, to seek an advice that's what i would say was i not audible on that uh, answer how much protein should be consumed yeah yeah, yeah. you were at the at the end we couldn't uh, it it got stuck disconnected okay fine i thought this connected yeah okay. yeah actually we are running out of time ma'am uh, we have many questions but i will uh, conclude by asking one last question so today our topic was protein in your routine uh so we would like you both to suggest one such diet which we can include include in our regular diet so me dr lakshmi are you answering that uh, you want uh, a protein source which is which you can include in your diet every day yes ma'am like for example for you and ma'am a, a small thing i want to add I don't, I don't know, I don't think it's just about the protein. A balanced diet, just now, uh, what Abhinav yes, ma'am has yes, focused, yes, yes. a balanced diet with good amount of protein, carbohydrates, nutrients, whatever is there uh, for a lifestyle of right now. Whatever we as a medical students has right now, most of the students are medical students, and uh, for us, if at all, if we want to advise to our patients who are coming mm -hmm. uh, in the near future, what kind of diet? why because i want to add a small thing over here i want your opinion both your opinions on this there have been many people who have been uh, do not qualify i don't say uh, to be qualified but they have been they have come out with many other such kind of diets like uh, uh, what do we say that uh, the diet of a keto diet 
from Assam, some person from Andhra Pradesh, or next coming to the Kadarwali diet, I think he is a very uh, person of uh, who is focusing on Indian uh, food. Uh, basically, just now as oh, ma'am focused yeah. on, and coming to the person, Dr. B. M. Hegde. If we speak about uh, B. M. Hegde, he would be saying that low protein diet is only the the best thing. Uh, you need not go behind this all things. So. which is the best thing or uh, i want your individual opinions on these three of them you want me to answer first go ahead aparna okay i i don't know your name uh, you the person who asked the question so let us start with the men's fashion so i think in 1970s if you watch the movies there were bell bottom pants and then you had some high waist pants and then you have low waist pants so now you have some pants which are torn and that's the latest style so like that you have people coming from uh, whether it is heck day or you know the keto diet man or whoever it is as i told you they keep coming and they keep fading out but the fact is any time at any point of time as a medical professional balanced diet is the best diet all these keto diets and all those it will slowly damage the kidneys and very recently if you see high profile people dying because of consumption of uh, keto diets and all those that is because of lack of awareness they just follow uh, you know one or two people there is definitely a, a, a visible change in a person's uh, blood glucose levels or you know the hypertension or whatever it is but is that, that is only for a short period of time but internally there is huge amount of organ damage which happens with a high fat diet or a high protein diet or low you know xyz diet so at any point of time balanced diet is the best diet so in simple terms because uh, if you are medical professionals and you want to talk to your patients i am sure you will not give so much time to your patients that is what we experience uh, now that you are students you assume that you will be giving a lot of time to your patients but that does, does not happen because the profession is like that and you will have lots of people waiting outside the queue so first uh, suggestion is you let a nutritionist uh, be there in a in your clinics and let them speak about the diet because they will have time to explain it now if you have to explain uh, where you know in absence of nutritionist and all that always tell that if you have one cup of rice let them have you know uh, uh, double quantity of fruit uh, sorry double quantity of vegetable in terms of a curry or something like that so if it is one roti two cups of vegetable plus one cup of dal so if you have a plate you divide your plate half should be your fruits vegetables then you cut it into quarter uh, one half will be your carbohydrates that is cereals or millets the other uh, quarter should be your protein and that protein will include your dals it will include your uh, milk that is your curds or uh, egg meat everything together so one quarter of your plate should definitely have protein one quarter should be your cereals or millets and the remaining quarter should be your fruits vegetables and all this this is very very broadly that is if you can have you know the time to be given to your patients so this is in brief which i would like to tell the diets they will come they will eventually fade off balanced diet is always the best one uh, i leave it to the La- lakshmi now for further discussion uh, similar as to what has aparna has said do not follow any diet which has a name to it so anybody comes and says this is the name of my diet just say no yeah and follow balanced diet yes for balanced diet carbohydrates include whole grains don't include anything white on the plate tell your patient that anything which is white take off your plate white rice white bread white sugar white maida don't include anything white anything brown take it brown rice millets anything brown they can have jawar anything on the plate that is carbohydrates protein they can have a cup of dal include ask them to include lot of green leafy vegetables yeah and also any vegetable any vegetable very less oil and more of ask them to cook less and also include one probiotic source that is usually in india we eat curd and buttermilk right so include that in your diet and one more thing we are all going gaga over vegan 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 but when i get patients uh, for counseling or whatever everybody is deficient in one vitamin can you tell me rashna what is that d it's vitamin b12 b12 okay yes. 
So vegan sources, dairy, meat, milk, these are the sources of vitamin B12. So if you are completely excluding that and people have, are becoming vegan and forcing their children also to be vegan. So, I mean, since like, maybe we don't have research papers yet on children being vitamin B12 deficient, but long-term implications are going to be there for sure in their adult life if they, have, if they are vegan from a tender age. So tell your patients to follow a balanced diet, including include everything in their diet. Don't become vegan. Don't become whatever whatever the, the name of the diet is. Just include everything: dairy, eggs, milk, meat. Uh, you know, a green lot of green leafy vegetables. And if they cannot, if they do not have time, for example, you guys, if you do not have time, you can have a spinach smoothie or something in the morning. Afternoon, you can eat your roti with your egg and uh, your vegetable. Afternoon, drink a glass of probiotic juice evening have a fistful of nights nuts and tell them to have dinner pre-sunset so once the sun metabolism goes up with the sun and comes down with the sun so post seven o'clock don't load on biryani at 12 o'clock in the night so because you will your metabolism is zero and all that is going to convert into fat your, and deposit around your visceral organs so tell them to have dinner pre-sunset and follow a healthy diet that's it um, we have another question from the audience. Uh, uh, how is raw egg different from a boiled egg and uh, also from the other egg dishes in terms of protein source? May I? Go ahead. Okay, raw egg uh, and uh, cooked egg. It is always better we go for cooked egg because uh, there is something called as avidin, uh, which is an anti-nutrient which binds to biotin which are other, and apart from biotin, there are other, uh, you know, vitamins also, which are bound and they will make them unavailable in the body. So definitely cooked sources are better. See, we, when we talk about people in Stone Age and all those, they would eat raw meat, raw flesh, raw eggs and all those. But now the digestibility has come down. So it is better to go for cooked uh, sources of uh, egg or any you know, other uh, sources ra rather than the raw sources, except for the salad, vegetables, fruits and all those things. So coming to raw egg and cooked egg, definitely 100% cooked egg is better than raw egg. Don't go for or don't venture into raw eggs, not only because of biotin, but also because, you know, uh, if there is some kind of slight, see egg, the keeping quality is actually very, very less. And in the food chain and the food value chain and supply chain, sometimes the eggs are not stored properly. So there will be some kinds of uh, spoilage also which happens, which upon cooking, because our Indian cooking, we subject the food material to somewhere around 140 to 160 degrees centigrade. So if there is some kind of contamination or spoilage also, it will be taken care of. Whereas if you consume raw foods, there is every chance that, you know, the contaminants can give you ill health. Apart from that, these anti-nutrients, they will uh, bind and, you know, you know, they will make the other nutrients uh, less av available, bioavailable. Sometimes there could be contamination, like Aparna said, like something could be attached to the raw shell and you're breaking it up and putting in your cup and drinking. There might be contamination of E. coli, which is uh, really dangerous for your health. So always it's better if it is meat and meat products and eggs, you make sure it's cooked well. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for patiently answering our questions. Uh, I would like to hand it over to Hemant Reddy, who is our state director for uh, State Telangana, SIMSA. Hello, ma'am. Uh, a very good evening. And sorry for not introducing myself before asking you the question. Uh, actually, uh, that was a really very great session with you people, ma'am. Uh, really, it was very informative, ma'am. And one last question I want to ask Aparna, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, there is a very uh, huge increase in the milk production as per your graphs, whatever I've seen, ma'am. Uh, there is a there is a more of evidence that they have been giving many steroids and uh, uh, many things to induce milk production fr from the animals. So, is this the way? Are we heading in a good way in our uh, health wise means of course uh, as per protein whatever you are, you have uh, explained us it's really good that uh, from the protein side we are uh, gaining a good gain but uh, as a whole means uh, i uh, whatever the studies i have gone through we have seen that uh, the females who have been taking the milk of such kind of 
from the animals of such kind they have been attaining their physiological changes just like uh, if at all they are uh, attaining the menses at the uh, uh, men- menarche at the age of 14 or 15 earlier now it has been coming down because of this steroids which have been give, which have been uh, getting induced into their body from the milk so okay. is this the way that we uh, are we going in the correct way or not that's the thing i want to know okay okay mr hemant so i have been receiving your mails but i didn't know you were hemant so nice meeting and talking to you yeah coming to your question on this uh, steroids and all those things uh see our media they are playing a lot of role in tuning our minds nowadays so they show you something they they show the strawberries being painted and then uh, you know you say that there is a huge amount of contamination then there is a whatsapp video which says there's an injection in watermelon and then it grows red right? and then there is another video where they say that you know the atta is being uh, washed under the tap and then they say there is plastic now this uh, steroids or estrogen basically what you are talking about is estrogen uh, which is getting into the milk and supply chain okay now coming to this question on uh, estrogens or antibiotics or any kinds of residues in the milk yes there is definitely an uh, uh, increased use or uh, or rather say rampant use of this uh, you know estrogens or all, all these things to enhance the milk production in the animal now uh, there is a ban on some kinds of uh, these uh, you know hormonal injections and all that however in indian market they are available and they are being given but then the basic thing is the way we process our milk we boil the milk and when we are talking about boiling the milk we boil for at least 4 to 5 minutes at a temperature which is reaching something like around 180 degrees centigrade 160 to 180 degrees centigrade that is one in home then second is the milk packets which uh, which come to our houses they are all pasteurized or sterilized milk now when you talk about pasteurization or sterilization they will be subjected to more than 200 degree centigrade 100 to 200 degree centigrade for various periods of time and then you will see that the milk is pasteurized now after that pasteurized the milk is sold to us we again boil the milk that is what is happening so in the process of boiling the milk all these steroids or estrogens which you talk of will not be there there is absolutely no residual effect of these estrogens in the milk and then the media which shows that you know there is huge amount of breast growth in men because of consumption of this milk which is having all these hormones and all those or women attaining uh, menarche or all these things they are definitely myths and they are all the media you know hypes which are being shown so any food which is heated to a large level definitely all these uh, hormones or whatever you say they will go down hormones are nothing but amino acids they will degrade and they will denature when you can when you subject it to very high temperatures so there is definitely no effect all these are you know uh, all uh, trash sources which we are getting unfortunately the media is not projecting the food and uh, food related information in the right way and with whatsapp and all those we keep forwarding it just like that within no time it reaches everybody and people start assuming so there are other people who are not literate on these subjects they keep tuning and they assume that this is what is happening which are all myths so estrogen in the milk after boiling it gets destroyed there is no problem at all menarch i mean attaining menarch and all that nowadays menopause also is coming off at 40 45 years they are all you know different kinds of reasons stress and all that even in children it is the same they are reaching it for various other reasons and not just because of estrogen containing milk thank you ma'am thanks a lot for that uh, answer and uh... okay. now i would ma'am, like to before we conclude this session this is the last question to both of you uh this is a question which is left unanswered uh since many days uh, is egg a vegetarian food or a non vegetarian food ma'am <laughs> okay so <laughs> which came first the chicken or the egg <laughs> <laughs> okay that answers my question <laughs> yeah so right. oh, so basically if my clients are vegetarians i just uh, tell them to become vegetarians if they can if their religion permits that is 
because uh, mostly in India, like we all spoke all this time, we don't get our protein requirements of the day. You know, mostly even if we, if we are uh, eating meat, we eat meat, like Aparna said, once or twice in, in a week or once or twice in a month, which, which doesn't uh, provide enough um, protein for us. So basically, either for Aparna or you or me or for anybody, are we taking one gram of protein per kg body weight? No. So mostly we have hair loss, right? So when somebody follows a diet, they start having hair loss. They ha start having wrinkly skin. So you, you lose your radiation. That is because there is calorie reduction, but with that, there is protein reduction also, right? So if you want to reduce your calories, reduce your calories, but do include a glass of milk and do include an egg, which is which at least suffices uh, for, for at least 10% of your protein requirements per day. If not consuming, remembering and thinking, okay, did I take my milk today? Did I take my egg today? Okay, apart from that, what I need to take, you need to think. But if you do not consume one glass of milk and or egg also, then you need to keep thinking throughout the day, throughout the night, what to how to inc include your protein sources for the next day. So that would be a big problem if you do not consume an egg. Uh, I request Heyman to please announce the results. Now I would like to announce the winner and runner-up. And uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Uh, team three is a winner with a score of nine, and team five is a runner-up with a score of eight point five. And I think uh, the rest I don't want to. I would not like to announce them. But still, they are a, a bit. Uh, they have done a really a good uh, work of uh, submitting your abstracts they were really nice to uh, see but as a team of judge, judging they have done their work excellently and uh, for us today we, we are delighted for, with your presence ma'am now i would like to give the vote of thanks we would like to acknowledge our gratitude to Lakshmi Kilero ma'am and Aparna ma'am for sparing time to tell our students the importance of protein in our daily routine. I also extend my thanks to Rachna, Amulya, Yashaswini and uh, Vamshi who are moderators and local committee heads of their colleges and also to whole team of Simsa, Telangana and Andhra Pradesh for their enormous cooperation in organizing this webinar. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks a lot for your presence. We are very much delighted and we are, we'll be looking forward to work with you for further assistance from your side. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you and uh, congratulations the winners and uh, definitely the others also have done a good job and uh, keep it up. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, participants. Thank you, Rachna. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.